Hi, I'm John Runyon, principal with Cascade Environmental Group. Um, so I'm a watershed planner. Uh, I used to be a, actually a watershed council coordinator for the McKinsey, gosh, back in the late 90s. So that was the hardest job I ever had. Um, consulting looks easy compared to that, that's for sure, managing the board and everything else. So I am, uh, since being a watershed council coordinator, I've, I've embarked on a career as a watershed planner, and I work a lot with watershed councils and other entities around the state to help them think about uh, what drives their watersheds, what are the, the key uh, limiting factors and issues in the watershed, and then identifying uh, and prioritizing restoration projects. And when I saw the RFP that came out from the uh, Clackamas uh, uh, partnership, um, I thought, ah, this is interesting. They're asking for a database that can be used to track projects. And I, I knew coming into this project that with 15 uh, different um, uh, entities that are partners in it, you just have a list of some of them, four watershed councils, Clackamas SWCD, Metro, ODFW, DQ, County uh, Government, U.S. Forest Service, and others are involved in the project. I saw that one, with the number of partners that would be proposing projects, two, with the extensive geography that included not just the Clackamas Basin, but also um, uh, Johnson Creek, Kellogg Creek, Abernathy Creek, and other tributaries to the lower Willamette River, you had not just a massive geography, you also had a bunch of, of folks who were working on it. We needed to have a database, but but hopefully a database that could be online. And so when I saw the RFP come out, came out, I talked to Sitka about approaches that they had used in the past because I knew that they um, had worked a lot with BPA and others on these on, on online databases to see if there was a platform that we could leverage off of. And it turned out that the, the project tracker platform that was developed down in the Tahoe region was really ideal for us to take projects from the proposal stage on through the process. Um, so our, our focus is on restoration and conservation actions in the Clackamas River Basin and in those other uh, associated watersheds, Abernathy, Kellogg, etc. cetera. Uh, our emphasis is on habitat restoration for salmon, steelhead, Pacific land, prey, and bull trout. Um, uh, either ESA or sensitive species, those are our focal species that were um, uh, uh, emphasizing with this. The idea for the group is to collaboratively plan, develop, implement, and track, and report on restoration projects. Um, and this group has been working together uh, in some form over the last 10 years. Uh, and they really coalesced around this um, to develop a funding strategy and apply for OM focused investment partnership funding. So that was that was what sort of coalesced the group. They applied for a development grant to develop their watershed strategy and plan, uh, and then hired me, and, uh, and uh, I brought in Sitka to help them with the process. So um, as we said, EIP builds on Project Tractor Foundation. This is uh, just a, 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 an outline of the um, kind of the out of the timeline for the Clackamas Partnership. Uh, really, it started in the 1990s with the watershed councils getting organized. Uh, and then in 2015, uh, watershed councils came out with the um, RFP for the um, uh, facilitation of the partnership process. That's when I submitted with Sitka. Uh, we won the project. Uh, and then uh, in 2016, they were awarded the money. We started moving forward with the planning at that time. Uh, and that's when we started to develop Project Tracker and adapting that specifically off the platform they have for the Tahoe to what the needs were for the Clackamas. Uh, and then uh, we're moving forward. We've got a draft strategic plan. We're going to prepare an OWEB grant proposal, at, uh, which will be submitted at the end of June for the focused investment partnership process. And hopefully we'll get FIP funding, which would begin in 2019. Um, so. Clackamas Project Tracker, um, again, is, is um, our online planning platform. As you'll see, it's really more than that. It's also uh, a way that, that uh, stakeholders, landowners, others can look online and see what the Clackamas Partnership collectively is doing in terms of those <coughs> projects and then tracking those projects over time. What I want to talk about is some of the nuts and bolts 
of the system. It's, it's really a sophisticated uh, relational database, essentially. Uh, and, and when you have a relational database, you need to have the, the particular elements that relate to each other. And the fundamental one is uh, the geography that we have. Um, and we decided that the basic building block geographically that we would um, uh, track projects, track progress uh, for, was going to be six field watersheds. Um, and we have a bunch of them. Uh, so it's six field watersheds, and it would be three, or I'm sorry, four river reaches, three on the Clackamas, and then one river reach along the Willamette. So it's reach based, and it was six field watershed based, is six field watershed based in terms of our geographic uh, framework. On top of that geographic framework, we have um, a, a set of limiting factors. And what we're tearing off of for our planning effort is the Lower Columbia uh, Recovery Plan, ESA Recovery Plan, which is focused on steelhead uh, and salmon, obviously, uh, and we extended that to include bull trout and Pacific lamprey. But the um, recovery plan has a whole set of limiting factors that are listed out for the various populations within the Lower Columbia, including the specific Clackamas population, which we're focused on. So this is a distinct population within the Lower Columbia uh, ESU, uh, and we've identified limiting factors tiered off that plan for all of the six field watersheds and for all of the reaches. So we went in and uh, with um, folks from ODFW and other experts, we determined what the limiting factors were for each of those watersheds. So this is the other key element in our relational database is the limiting factors. So when we have a project, we can say, this is where it is, these are the limiting factors, and these are the species that we're impacting. Uh, and you can see here, uh, if you look at it, you can, uh, the number of projects that target each of those species is there. If you click on the, the icon, you get information on the, the, the <coughs> species and what the, the targets are for those. So those are kind of the, the basic uh, building blocks for when we develop a project, we say this is the geography, these are the limiting factors, these are the focal species that we're targeting with a particular project. Most of our projects um, that, we're, that we're considering right now are focused on the key limiting factors for salmon and steelhead in the system. And the key one is habitat complexity, including off-channel access, floodplain access, um, and not surprising, I think a lot of you confront that in your watersheds. It's really about ju juvenile rearing habitat and providing the kind of complexity in off-channel areas that they need for rearing. But also we're looking at, at migratory <coughs> habitat. We're unique because of our setting. Uh, we have the Clackamas population, but we also have all those fish coming down from the upper um, uh, uh, Willamette uh, juveniles into the system and indeed adults as they migrate through the Willamette. So we affect a lot of different populations. The final sort of key piece of this that we're tracking is what are our performance measures in meeting the habitat goals that are developed that were developed for the Lower Columbia Plan? And as I said, most of the focus there is on habitat complexity. We have a set of, of, of performance measures that we can use to then um, uh, uh, essentially track and measure those. And so, for example, large wood. Um, uh, for each project, we project out how much large wood we're going to uh, place. It's in the system, it's in the database, and then as we move forward to implementation, then we report out in the end, and it's in the system, we can do that, how much large wood was actually placed for a project. So we have the planning level, and then we have the final um, execution of the project, implementation of the project, and the um, post-project performance measures. We also have performance measures in here for off-channel uh, access, side-channel access, um, uh, uh, fish passage. So we have a whole variety of things, water temperature, all in here as performance measures, uh, which is something that OWEB expects for the FIPS, and indeed any funding organization now, there's an expectation that you uh, essentially call out what you've accomplished for the project, what kind of benefits have you achieved here, and then we can feed that into a monitoring program that, that looks at overall effectiveness or really affecting the, the, the fish populations. So those are the, the building blocks. Geography, the, the limiting factors, and the species, and then ultimately what are the performance metrics that come out in the end. And it's, it's a really straightforward system for tracking all those, um, all those pieces.